Thunder and the Heat were straight into the scores for this one. Heat are done for the round. So are the Thunder with their one game there. And I did have Tanvi Sanger, here, as, you, as you can see here, on my emergencies. He had a really, really good bowling effort here. Uh, three for in this one. As soon as you're getting that three for, guys, you're getting that bonus. Likely you're getting that economy rate bonus as well. So, yeah, a great one for him. 94 gives a nice price rise. Obviously, you know, me changing Wes Agar to him. End up being a pretty good uh, idea there. It means that likely I don't have to change any of my emergencies. Uh, I think we're going to hold Glenn Maxwell and likely just going to grab a bunch of those Adelaide strikers anyway. So good to get a little bit of a price rise out of Tanvir here. If you had to play him for some reason or you decided to play him, happy days. He scored better than a lot of the guys that had a double. Uh, so that worked out well for him. Chris Green with his hitting at the end, a couple of wickets was good. Um, and Ollie Davies looking very solid before things slowed up before he got out there, unfortunately. Uh, in that one, Zaman Khan as well, guys, 55. He looked pretty solid. He's a funky action, doesn't he? The big slinger, the big Lassith Malinga style. Uh, I definitely think he'll play a part at some point uh, in round four for a lot of coaches there as well. Uh, and the rest of the guys there, Sam Z, 25, a bit of a low one for him. And uh, we'll drop his price down a little bit for those of us who don't have him currently. And then uh, Jilksy there, just still not looking great, unfortunately, at the top of the order for the Thunder at the moment and the last few years. Has his odd game, but um, you know, guys like Ollie Davies are definitely looking better than him at the moment and would be a better selection at this stage heading into round four. For the Heat, Bartlett, hey? People are like, oh, he won't bowl that many overs, won't bowl that many overs. And then this game, he bloody bowls four and Niza only bowls two. So that's a super frustrating one for, for Niza. Thank goodness he ended up taking three catches and, and picked up a wicket in the early stage of this of, of this innings. But, um, you know, 58 for him um, with a couple of runs. Just very, very lucky on that front. But frustrating that... And my only thoughts here is is the fact that he is still battling with some type of that soreness that, that got, kept him out of the Prime Minister's 11. And, and that's kind of hurt him from, from really dominating. But, uh, yeah, we'll take it, really. Didn't bowl amazingly in that first game didn't get a bat he only scored two runs across the two games he picked up uh three wickets across both of those games as well um but only bowling uh the five overs so three in the first two in this one pretty frustrating for someone we paid a lot of money for but um yeah we'll take the what, 100 or so points that we picked up from in 47 in the first and 58 in this one if anyone who started with swepson my goodness he's an absolute belter of a start Bowled really well also, and he's, the, he's their main guy kind of getting four overs there. Uh, so well done to him. we we'll have a super low break even, I think near, near the negative 60 kind of mark it looks like for, ne for next round as well. But it's going to be very hard to pick him up just based on schedule. But if you're looking for a cash grab and you started with him, you're absolutely crushing it. Uh, Walter ended up with the four overs in this one. So, you know, we found his role. It did take until game two. But, you know, it, I think the reason for this one was in that first game, they were winning very comfortably and, and didn't need him to be that sort of death bowler. Um, and they had Sweps and they had Kuhneman that were all bowling pretty well. And um, in this one here, they really liked his change of pace and, and his ability to, to find, you know, to find dots. Um, and that worked out well in this one for 71 to go along with his, you know, a little bit lower score in the first round, but but in the first game, sorry, but, but decent overall. So he'll make a little bit of cash, I believe, as well which will be good. Um, and Bartlett's going to make plenty there. So if you started with a bunch of these heat, these heat players, like the Bartlett's, Walters, sort of Swepps and Okunaman, um, you know, Munro, obviously, then you've done really, really well. Kuhneman's so happy with his start, 59 and 60 across his two games. So he'll make some good cash as well. Uh, a couple of wickets in this one. I was worried about him not coming on until a little bit later, but uh, end up working out. Munro, another 56 for him and you know, some good runs, almost a 50 again. He's one of those guys that I'm interested in potentially holding. I might have to trade like a Niza out and you know, Tom Curran and potentially like a, a Billings, I'd say, would be where I'm at at the moment as my three. And I think that's enough um, to get to all the top guns from the strikers and might be able to keep Munro for next game um, and maybe longer term, given I think I'm going to have to keep two heat plays at this stage. So that's that. McSweeney looks solid as well, guys. Kind of, you know, noodled him around a little bit, a couple of good shots as well. Um, but 29 for him. And Billings just kind of mucked around with his strike rate bonus in the end. He was sitting very, yeah, he was sitting at that sort of 25 extra points for the strike rate at, when he got to 20. He was 20 off 11 uh, and then missed a lot of balls and obviously getting out uh, ruins the strike rate as well. So a bit of a tough one at that point. For Billings, could have been a lot more, but 28 in both games, not great. Uh, and then uh, Renshaw, Joshy Brown, 14, hit two sixes, a lot of dots in between, uh, which cooked his strike rate bonus. 
And then uh, Spencer Johnson with the five. So it doesn't seem like he's the guy at the moment that is in tip-top shape and is also getting two over. So him and Niza both got the two, which was frustrating. But um, anyone who got Spencer, he needs to be get rid, get out of your side very, very quickly because uh, unfortunately that wasn't good enough there. So with one game to go, guys, we have the Stars and the Scorchers. I have Sammy Harper and Cooper Connolly in my starting side. Um, and, I, and I hope that they go very, well, very, very well. Let me know who you got left in that in that last game and uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, we'll just quickly jump into the the scorecard. The player of the match again was Swepson, so absolutely crushed it again. Uh, yeah, Munro just continued to dominate, 46 off the 33. McSweeney helped him out a little bit, just ended up obviously, you know, ended up being a decent amount of runs in the end at 151. Thankful for uh, you know, guys like Billings at the end, um, really came in and helped out and the guys didn't muck around when they got in, like Walter and, and Spencer Johnson there. Which, uh, which helped them out for sure. But uh, yeah, Josh Brown, t- two sixes, and then yeah, lots of dots in between. It wasn't great, unfortunately. Um, but bowling side, Tanvir was the was the king, along with Zaman Khan. Both did really, really well. And uh, yeah, Liam, Hitch- Liam Hatcher as well, three overs, one for 16, um, with the other guys being sort of solid with um, Samsey, only the two overs. So a bit of a strange one for, for Samsey in this game. I think that he'll uh, obviously work into the tournament. Don't uh, rush away from picking him up later. If you do own him now, it's a little bit of a tough one. Um, I personally wouldn't be holding on to him. Um, if, if you've got like only a couple of guys to sell, then then he's got to go. But if you have sort of like five or six that aren't on the double in the next few weeks, then then maybe he's a hold um, given he'll drop a little bit in price and um, will be important throughout the, the rest of the season. Obviously with a couple of doubles in four and nine. Uh, and then you move to the Thunder guys and Bancroft started well before a nice LBW from Swepson. You had Michael Neeser as well pick up uh, Hales in that first over of his, which was helpful. Jilksy really struggled three off 10. Um, but yeah, Bartlett just coming in and doing a good job there. Ollie Davies, as I said, was solid. Um, and then you're going down the line there and it kind of you know, was held together by Green and McAndrew. And they almost had a bit of a chance there before um, Maka and obviously Greeny got out in that one there. So thankful for the Kuhnman wicket. Ended up with um, two for 18 off his three. Yeah, you get that economy rate bonus, which is good. Swepson continues to dominate. Yeah, end up with um with play of the match in this one. I probably would have given it to Walter, to be honest with you, instead. But uh, you obviously the better figures hit the six as well. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I think probably more of the fact they're going with Swepson got a couple of those uh, important wickets at the top. And then, yeah, they bowled Bartlett that second, second to last over, and he was getting whacked around a bit. And obviously that last one helped him. He got a couple of wickets. Um, and not many runs off him, but uh, yeah, and he's a two overs, one for 13. Just frustrating uh, that he's not getting those overs, but uh, it is what it is, and we'll be moving on from knees up from here. So thankfully, he didn't go super poorly. The three catches, as I said, was super helpful. And uh, yeah, we'll head into the last game, guys, and then we'll uh, be reviewing my team and uh, obviously the, the thoughts going forward, but we'll be, we'll be watching the uh, Pakistan Aussie test in between that first round and that second round, so plenty of break in there. Enjoy that last game. I'll see you in the next one.